So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a USB, we're going to plug it to our computer, download two pieces of software. One will be an operating system, Android x86. One will be Rufus that will help put that 86 on this USB. Then we'll get from there back to this table and we'll see what do I have here. It's extremely extremely easy and here we are the software side of things first i'll leave a link in the description in case you don't know where android x86 is well you could use other android alternatives if you want to which are the phoenix and remix and all that stuff i just like to go raw android without any of the bloatware because all i'm gonna run on it is the tiny cam cameras and after you click this uh, source forge download you click download here it's just less than a gigabyte. We have it downloaded already. Then you come to this page that I will leave a link in the description as well. Depending on what you have, I have a regular 64 Windows. If you have a 32-bit Windows, you can go with a x86. I'll go with 4.4 at the time of this recording, which is this Rufus right here. And after those are downloaded, Rufus should be somewhere that you can find. In my case, it's right here. See? And when you're inside Rufus, make sure you choose the right USB because of course uh, it will delete every single thing you have if you have the wrong USB so choose the one you have I have a 64 gig then select the ISO file that we downloaded as you see right here we hit open and we are gonna leave everything else alone you can do MBR or GPT but we're gonna do MBR right here because I'm installing it on a quite older device volume I'm gonna leave the name as it is and here ISO image yes and here click OK this is your last warning before every single file on that USB is deleted and replaced with the Android system so be very careful make sure you chose the right device okay and we wait it's deleting partitions we'll do the formatting all that stuff and we'll get back when this is done and of course it got done actually quite fast so we are done with the usb part and uh, we're gonna jump to the good old clunker that we had there that hp and first of course we're gonna safely eject the usb and take it with us and we are back at the table with the usb that we just made it's fresh oh it smells really nice just came off the oven so when you're at this point all you gotta do is throw the usb in one of the ports whichever you find easier and whichever port gives you a giggle on this one is an hp so hp usually is f9 the uh boot up device but for yours it may vary so please check it up uh some dells sometimes are f12 or f1 or delete or f2 it's weird so just google it up whatever computer you have pc or laptop what is your uh device boot key that's what you need and in this case we just have to press the button to start and we'll see if it turns off the lights for the entire neighborhood we will keep pressing f9 meanwhile okay we go f1 boot it says is it's not giving us another option but i'm assuming after the boot it will do something okay so as luck has it i had to switch from the hp to this old dell well of course they just decide not to work when you are making a video and i absolutely love it and to show my appreciation the biggest piece of that hp is maybe one inch anyway so here after we press f12 on this one since now it's a dell we get to the boot menu and we have to start with usb storage device hit enter and wait for it to start and when you're inside the usb uh you can run live without installing it but you're running it straight from the usb and any changes you made if you sign in or download apps or anything when you're in live after you shut down and reboot again poof they're all gone so in this case we're gonna go to advanced options because i want to install it and we're gonna do an auto installation which is to specify hard disk because we know what hard disk we're talking about wait for this whole thing to start and we're gonna go to pny that's the 120 gigs that we want to do click yes hit enter are you sure to do so sir and you say yes sir and that's it just wait for this old clunker to go somewhere if it goes somewhere if it doesn't then uh do what i did with the hp yeah hmm. okay after it's done usually i like to hit reboot instead of of a run but first i'm going to 
take the uh, USB out just to make sure we're in a good start so it doesn't start from this USB instead it should in a perfect world switch to the uh, drive inside if it doesn't then you just click F12 to go to that drive but anyway that's it uh, okay let it reboot and see if it boots to Android oh here we go you could either do these things here or just leave it alone and it will start on the first selection by itself and looks like we're in a good start let's see oh yep here we go i think this one is android 9 if i'm not wrong oh well we'll have to see about that it should not take too long to get to this screen hopefully and uh in here you just simply do the regular installation you would do with any android and no i don't have my wi-fi card on it that's why you don't see wi-fi stuff here because i'm going to uh, connect to internet with a hard wire i do not like this whole wi-fi thing it's enough that we have cameras on wi-fi date and time is definitely not 2020 so let me plug an ethernet cable in it and we'll talk to you in a second okay so now it has some uh, nice and juicy ethernet cable and I'll, I'll auto adjust the time and date in a second uh no location no scanning we don't need any of that no google doesn't need to know that and i think we are good to accept and no i'm not gonna put any kind of passwords is this will stay home this is not coming with me and just i guess quick step i have no idea and yep that's all i needed we are good to go we're gonna install tiny cam and we're gonna throw in logins for other cameras and we should be good okay i don't need wi-fi at all we're gonna leave that part alone okay and we're gonna just sign in really quick virtual wi-fi by the way that you see right here is the ethernet itself that's just what it does finish precision t1700s yeah it's definitely a t1700 android okay uh no we're not gonna copy anything we're gonna make a fresh one uh let me insert these things without uh, anybody seeing it okay just in case you need other apps that need to be uh able to work with arm or whatever that are made for arm just go to settings as you see right here when you're at the settings this one that uh, right here says android uh, x86 options turn on this uh, native bridge i highly suggest you download fdroid here because why not but that's up to you i'm going to download it for myself because it's good to have it so when you're at the google play here you can search for tiny cam i'm gonna get the pro because i have the pro license but you have you can get this tiny cam monitor which is free uh, yeah of course you'll have maybe fewer features but basically you can view all the cameras just normal as well so i'm gonna go with the pro and we'll get right back okay so now i have the tiny cam pro fully installed next 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 know that and we're gonna add some cameras you can add android camera you can scan the network for cameras if your cameras are connected on the same network or you can add ip camera that's what i am going to do here soon i probably will make a video so how you can add older phones that still have a camera and can function with the same software so you can add cameras that you just have laying around to this software and have a whole thingy going on here but for now we're gonna add this nvr dvr thing first camera name not the most important thing to do but i'm gonna put b c K Y backyard is that's what this camera would be this is a wise camera so i'm gonna leave wise labs and wise cam and protocol is gonna be rtsp over tcp now there's a whole process of uh adding rtsp to your wise camera they are by default without it so i probably can make a video if you guys want me to how to do this part here as you see rtsp option pops in the bottom here and you can just uh, add it like that and when you have this it will generate a link and all that you put a name or username and a password to it which is not the same as the password you log in to your wise cameras in this particular uh, scenario we have here 
The wise camera, yes, it has been crushed a million times, but it works. And I'm gonna just put it here. So here the host name or the IP address. We're gonna put the IP address really quick. And protocol, we did that already. Username and password. That will be generated when you do that uh, RTSP thing. So again, I'm just gonna add them really quick. Okay, and now we have to go right here and in here we will find the channel number now this will show you what's in this uh let's say when you have all your cameras on like this in this order this camera we're trying to play with here is this one right here so it's one two the third so we're gonna enter number three and hit okay and now everything else should be pretty much ready to go and uh, we're gonna go back and b c k y is what we want here give it a second to just load it and here in live view now we have our camera that we just connected it's this little thing right here actually that's pretty good for a v2 this one is not a v3 it's a v2 v3 is way better than this so i'll probably do the v3 later on but for a v2 this is not bad at all yeah i can see my bulls there now so in all in all this app is actually worth every penny that it costs is you can do the sound here as you see in real time, it can hear what I'm saying. Let me block it again. This is some kind of recent st uh, stuff that you might have and all that stuff. And it just works really good. So in my opinion, if you have not only wise cameras, but any cameras that can do the RTSP, it's worth it. And yes, as I said, I will probably make a full tutorial on uh, how to check these cameras with uh you know to connect actual phones instead of uh, cameras via rtsp so you can put a phone on a window or whatever or in every single window you have and connect it directly to this app and you can check the multi cameras themselves this is actually really really beautiful and here you can start recording directly on this app you can talk to the camera you can just allow it and right now i would be talking but i'm not going to because i really do not need that and besides that i really like this this is background mode that you can set up and you can have it record whatever you want and continuous recording and all that good stuff you have uh, stream profile auto and you can scan on your network for example if your cameras are connected via Wi-Fi on the same network that this computer, for example, is, well, you can go ahead and scan and see if it finds. And as you see, it found two of them here, but I'm not going to connect them. So it is really, really good. I like it. It works and doesn't have too many words. Yes, you can minimize it like this or put it back on the screen, however you like. This is the different color for some reason and this is a better color here you can find the graph for whatever is happening and let me just take it out of here here you have the playback the motion and all that you have local you can view the timeline like you would view it on a regular dvr right here really really beautiful you can pin this to home so you can just get directly to this camera you can live stream directly on youtube too if you want to if you have one of those channels that i don't know bird watch or i don't know rabbits watch whatever you have yes you can use one of these rtsp cameras to do that and it's just that easy boom go back to the app and you have the cameras and now if i had more cameras they would show up here let me just add that camera i'm not i'm not gonna set it up but just to show you how it actually looks add it right here and uh, we'll go back so now instead of this you can switch to this one or you can go back here and if I had this one, for example, connected right now, I don't have the authentication key set up for that other camera that's being found here. But had I had that, I can set it up in this layout and you can add more of these uh, squares. You can add pst, how many, however many cameras and phones you want to add to it. And it looks just like a professional uh, camera viewer. So in my opinion, this is really beautiful. Not that hard to set up. Really, I set it up with a computer that's ready to 
go on its way. We're bringing it back. And you can just put it on the side right there and monitor things as you wish. And yes, this app you can install on your phone. It's not necessarily only in the computer. You can install that app on your phone, add all the cameras so you can have, let's say you have different cameras from different uh, companies. You put them all in this app and you are ready to go. And with that said, I hope you learned something and uh, let me know if you need any other help with the RTSP, at least on wise cameras that I happen to have. Yes, most of my cameras are wise because they're actually good cameras. I, I can't say they're bad at all because they're great. And uh, please hit like and subscribe, share it with somebody that might need to know or learn anything about this whole ordeal that we have going on here. And we'll see you next time. Bye.